Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Klima joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Hi Martin. Hi Sashni. Can you talk to us about why mining policy in South Africa needs to deal with both the highs and lows of mining? Yeah, you know, uh, Bruce Williamson, the mining analyst, he put out a magnificent postcard to the president. And in it, you know, he just was able to display how cyclical this mining industry is and how we're now so euphoric about this iron price, iron ore price going through the roof, but how depressed we were, you know, only five years ago uh, and uh, at the start of January 2016, I mean, we were in the lowest depths of hell where the price just plummeted <coughs> for, you know, certain companies, particularly Kumba Iron Ore, which is our main iron ore producers. <coughs> And, you know, you realize then that what we need in South Africa is like an all-weather mining policy. Because s things could have gone wrong at that stage, would have, which would have impacted the ability that we have now to really reap the rewards from this massive rise in the iron ore price. And if you had bought 100,000 rands worth of shares in Kumba Iron Ore, you know, in January 2016, you know, you'd be a triple, you'd just about be a triple millionaire on that, just that share alone and that movement, because it's moved by more than 2,500%. I mean, it's really rocketed and still going up. You know, as we wrote the story, the price was rising even higher than the figure that we were writing. So we see that um, we need an all weather type of mining policy. We need to take into consideration that when mines are really at a nadir, they, they need special treatment, particularly probably from the dues that they have to pay, to make sure that they can be a constant provider to the community, to the South African econo economic situation. Because now you can see that <coughs> our platinum group metal mines, our iron ore mines, they're setting records. They're going to pay huge amounts in tax. You know, they're going to really bring in foreign exchange <laughs> in big wads. And it's just what we need now. So we need to protect those mining industries. And when you think, you know, the combined ore isn't really <laughs> an old mine. We need to start exploring now, really, and get new mines. Because from that exploration can come many more platinum group metal mines. That, and we're going to need uh, these in the future, uh, iron ore into the future. Mm -hmm. So let's get that done now, but let's look at this mining industry. The government needs to look at it with the private sector and create an all-weather type of mining policy. And at the same time, just at this moment, we need the state-owned enterprise, Transnet, to really pull out the stops. You know, maybe an extra loop on the line, because we need to get as much iron ore to the port now as possible. Whatever the maximum is, we've got to do as South Africans to make sure that we get a lot of taxes, to make sure that we get a lot of foreign exchange, and the community around there benefits optimally at this stage because we know that at some stage in the future, it's going to go into the depths of hell again. And tell us about New York using platinum on the cathodes um, of a zinc air system. You know, <coughs> everybody is looking at renewable energy now. But sometimes the sun doesn't shine, sometimes the wind doesn't blow, sometimes you don't have the same volume of water that you need for the hydropower, so you've got to store that green electricity. So people are coming forward and saying, but how do we store it? And you see Zinc 8, that company, that was a, a winner <laughs> in, a, in a contest that they had in New York to see who's the biggest innovator and the most economic innovator and, and the best cost-effective innovator to store that electricity. Because New York wants to be a green city. So they have now, they're now working with Zinc 8 because that came top of the pile in this big contest. And one of the things that um, Zinc... Um, eight did is create this zinc air type of storage system for electricity and they picked zinc because it's readily available and uh, the, the price is usually reasonable so they were looking at the economics of that 
but and how they can particulate that to create what they need to store this electricity. But one of the tricks they've got is their cathode. Their cathode is very special. You know, this is a, they, they're not telling anyone about it in detail. And in the office that um, they use to actually speak to Mining Weekly, it was in that office that they're making this cathode. So cath that cathode is very special. And they did tell us that platinum is being used in that cathode. So again, we see the magic of platinum making this economic, this whole zinc air a battery system so that they can really go into New York. And now, you know, the people who are in charge of housing in New York, they are having to enforce a law which if you are bigger than a certain size, square footage, you've got to have clean energy. And so they are looking at serving about 58,000 <laughs> buildings, you know, with this new system. And that'll be great for another area that starts pulling on platinum group metals, which we host in such abundance and which we can supply without any issues. It's not as if, you know, uh, our mining isn't well established, the supply can be there, whereas a lot of the other batteries are into new areas that haven't really got that supply certainty of the minerals and metals and the critical metals. And we also know that, you know, the electric vehicle is going to take a lot of those metals that they need also for the battery storage. So this is putting Zincate in pole position. And we see not only economically are they very, very reasonable, but they're now recognized in New York. And it looks like they will manufacture in New York and also list in New York. But they're talking to the South Africans already. They're talking to the Australians. They want parts made all over you know, the world. And then they'll be part of an assembly. And if they have their licensing, you know, South Africa could have licensing here that gets the parts and then assembles them here as well. So it's an interesting thinking. And lastly, Angle Gold Ashanti is investigating renewable energy <coughs> projects across the group. Yes, yeah, so, you know, Anglo Gold Ashanti is still has a primary listing in Joburg, but it doesn't mine here. But you can see how the world is demanding, you know, renewable energy. They're demanding that you use wind energy, sun energy, hydropower. They are blessed with a lot of hydropower, as mm -hmm. it turns out. But in every situation they are in the world, they are looking at renewable energy. So you see the gold mining companies rising to the occasion, Paris Agreement, taking it seriously, against the background of their shareholders demanding this. We also see, you know, a company uh, like Goldfields going greener and cleaner. The whole mining world and the gold mining world is taking this climate change mitigation very seriously. And they're doing so because the financial institutions are forcing them to do it. Their shareholders are forcing them to do it. And in the end, you'll see that it will also benefit them financially. So looking around the world, Anglo Gold Ashanti is making sure that renewable energy is going to be a feature wherever they are. They've also got to make sure that when people are underground, they're not breathing these fumes that are deleterious to their health. So that sort of uh, effort is is, is coming through to prevent you know deleterious fumes from getting to the workers but of course more of them should be taking the big plunge of guaranteeing this by turning that renewable sun energy and wind energy and water energy into hydrogen so they can store it there and when their vehicles need to go underground they use that but I find too few are doing that at that's this stage they're still going through the the battery phase you know where there can be constraints, and I, I'm hoping that they'll go for the hydrogen route sooner than later. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly Daily Email Newsletter. <laughs>